We'll now cover editing your newsletters and autoresponders. The same editor is used for newsletters, autoresponders, and broadcasts. We'll use the newsletter this time to show how to use the editor. We'll click on Edit Newsletters to bring up the editor to start our demonstration of editing. We can edit our newsletters in plain text or in HTML enhanced. The first thing I would suggest you do is put a title in or a subject for your newsletter. We'll call this Test Newsletter. If you don't have a subject in and try to send the newsletter, you can possibly lose all of the input you've had up to that point. The plain text editor is just that. You can enter data into it as plain text by typing into it, or you can copy and paste text into it. We'll click on HTML Enhanced to bring up the HTML editor. We'll first put our subject in and call it My Newsletter. We'll scroll down and take a look at the sample templates of newsletters that we have in here. On the website, we have many scripts and newsletter templates and email templates expressly designed for real estate professionals. We'll click here on One Story Newsletter 1 to bring that up to do our testing on. As you see here, it's entered the, the subject of One Story Newsletter. We'll highlight that and make it be My Newsletter. If you wanted to change the subject later, you can always pull up the saved newsletter and, and change the subject of it. As we scroll down, you'll see that the actual editing portion of the editor here takes up little space. So what we'll do is click on this button here to maximize the editor size. When we do that, you'll see that the icons at the top and the actual editing portion will be increased to the size of your browser. You'll notice the template that we pulled up here. The templates that we pull up from the website and the scripts, when they have graphics inside of them, the graphics are linked to the graphics files that are on the server. So that way when you send your emails, you don't have to send them with the large picture size within the email thereby taking a long time for the email to actually be viewed and also having to send large files out. Also when the emails are accessed they're easier to get past spam filters when the email is not a large size and once the user opens it a lot of times the different browsers will give them the option of opening the graphics first or looking at the email and then opening the graphics. When they open the graphics, the graphics will be coming over the internet from our server. So it will be more efficient than sending out large pictures within your email. Notice that when the cursor is placed over these icons at the top, you'll get a label that comes up to describe what the icon actually does. We can click this minimize, this, the maximize the editor size to go back to the original or click back on it and have the editor take up the full screen. This triangle here will collapse the toolbar so that the entire screen will be our editing portion or we can click on it again and bring the two bars back in focus. The first icon we see here is source. When we click on the source icon, it will show you, you in the editing portion of the editor the actual HTML text or code. Once you learn more HTML programming, you can go here and actually change the look and feel of the newsletter or message by manipulating the HTML code here. We'll click source 
and go back to WYSIWYG format which is what you see is what you get format. The editor that we're using is the FCK editor and it's used in a number of applications. Therefore some of the icons that are here are not actually used in our autoresponder and newsletters. For example, the first icon here, which is document properties, is not used as you see it's grayed out. Also the save document has no purpose here. In order to save our documents, we'll actually go to the bottom and click on submit document. The next icon here is the new page icon and basically it will clear your screen to start over again. The icon here, preview, once clicked on will actually bring up a browser so that you can preview your document in a browser to see how it will actually look within an email. And as you notice as we open the document wider by moving the edge of the page you'll notice that the document actually changes and gets wider and narrower. So this is a good way to actually go in and see how your email will look depending on how wide the window is the user is viewing the document in. We'll close this. The next icon is the templates icon. If you click this one, there are a few templates that are built in and you can load you can use these if you like instead of the templates that we have within this program or the ones that we have on the website, the templates and scripts that we have for real estate professionals. We'll close this window. The next icons here are the cut, copy, paste, paste is plain text, and paste from Word icons. For doing cutting, copying, pasting, it's best to use the shortcuts on the keyboard. These are ones that you really do need to learn. For example, cut is control X. If I highlight this portion of text and press the control X key that text is deleted but it's saved in the clipboard so if I come to another place and hit the control V key it's pasted there another good one is the control Z which is here for undo if I click that it does the undo and this is the redo for redoing what you've just undone. If I want to copy text I can click here and press control C to copy and if I click here then that text is pasted there by clicking control V. So the keys that you really need to have down are copy, control C, paste, control V, cut, control X, undo, control Z, and redo here is control Y. This icon will allow you to print your document. 